Hello everybody, welcome to Collab Lab. We've done a series of interviews with big YouTube creators, asking them how they got started, what their influences are, and what kind of advice they've got for people just starting out. In this video, we talk to John from Stated Clearly about the Bible Belt, about choosing your audience, and about our scientific culture of talking fancy. Enjoy! So, John, what's your, what's your YouTube channel and uh, what's your real name as well? Okay, so my name is John Perry and I run Stated Clearly. It's a YouTube channel, it's also a website, statedclearly.com. And what we do there is we take complex scientific concepts, mainly in genetics and evolution, and we simplify them for the general public. And this started out of a frustration with me frustrated with how genetics was being taught. It, the way that we learned it in school was super confusing. And I felt like it was actually really simple and that we should teach it simply. And so that's the first video I did was, what is DNA and how does it work? Uh, teachers started using that in their classrooms. And so I started making more. A lot of it came from, you know, a lot of my, my friends didn't understand the stuff uh, that, that were there in the South. Yeah, it was the Bible Belt. Uh, most of my friends were either uh, Baptists or Mormons. I was thinking a lot about them when I was creating these videos. You know, how how can I explain this in a way that they're going to understand without a strong scientific background? Some of my friends in Tennessee didn't know how to read. They're adults, but were illiterate, um, slipped through the system somehow. But I'm trying to be extremely friendly and communicate as much as I can with the combination of images and words. Also, I've been actually going into forums like creationist forums and posting this stuff and having discussions with people on there. And it's working really well when I do that. Just talk about the science, why these things are important instead of doing the thing that's kind of typical with a lot of uh, popular science writers and even YouTubers just to kind of bash on the religious people. I feel like as a teacher, my responsibility is to teach and if my audience hasn't learned, then I have not taught, and I have failed. And so it's um, it's my responsibility to meet them where they're at. So when you're when you're talking to certainly with people who who have very little uh, scientific sort of background, how how do you tread the line between, I guess between like dumbing it down and between simplifying it without losing important content? Yeah, I well I've found that honestly most of the complicated things in science, scientific literature, <laughs> is our culture of talking fancy. So I just cut out all that. Just, just by ignoring all the stuff I don't, all the jargon I don't have to use, that's like 90% of the jargon that people normally use. And then for the jargon that's left over that I do have to use, again, I explain what it is. And then every time I mention that word again, it flashes on screen and there's a picture of it. And that's been, it's just doing that has has made uh, made this stuff accessible to people that I never thought it would be accessible to. I, I started out with a question. I want to know how this thing works, and I don't know how it works. So I start reading about it on the internet, and then I start finding links to the actual like research that was done on the subject. And if the people who did the research are still alive, and if it was fairly recent research, I email them. And I ask them to help me on this video, and I send them, it's a super short email, and I ask them uh, to help me, and I send them a sample of one of my videos, and almost every time I do this, I get a positive response. And if I don't get a positive response, I look to see if they're a professor, and if they are a professor, I look to see when their office hours are, and then I call mm -hmm. them. <laughs> and that is a... That is a really, really healthy. So for everybody watching, like that's that is a great attitude. Like, and that's sort of really heartening to hear as well. That really, like, the academic community, they want you to kind of reach out and be like, "Hey, I want to want to talk about your subject." I have all these epiphanies as I'm learning these subjects, all these aha moments, and I know what those epiphanies were and what things triggered those, and I can make sure and write those into the script. That's sounds like it's incredibly creative in terms of like what it brings you and it's very very uh, fruitful right just to have right. that kind of like to, for a prop for a big youtuber or a youtuber to meet a scientist and just to chat about those ideas and from what you're saying that will give rise to just a, a huge quantity of stuff that neither one alone 
would necessarily have reached by themselves. Right, and there's this curse of knowledge that you've heard of, I'm sure, where once you understand something really well, you don't remember what it's like not to understand it, and so to teach it to someone else is really difficult. And a lot of these, yeah, yeah. a lot of these professors are working just with PhD students. They're not teaching like you know 101 classes anymore. A lot of these researchers aren't, so they're not really, you know, being able to sit down and talk with me, someone who's hungry to understand what what it is that they're that they're talking about, and is also completely ignorant about it. I think is is helpful for them to. to uh, you know, what? I've I've forgotten what it's like to not. I forgot what it's like to not think that cell membranes are cool. I actually am starting to get to a point where I might be making things too complicated. <laughs> I kind of worry about but the, the video I'm working on right now, I'm a little bit worried that it might be over some people's heads because I am getting, I am myself getting to this point with biochemistry where some things just make sense to me because I've, I've, I've been talking about them and thinking about them for for three years now. Like, who are your inspirations, your YouTube inspirations? Um, <laughs> my inspiration actually didn't come from YouTube so much as it did from uh, Rosemary Mosco. She does comic strips called Bird and Moon Comics. And my, my other big inspiration was lynda.com. Why should we do science outreach? Oh, you should just go make a video because uh, <laughs> it might end up being interesting and helping a lot of people. Uh, the, the internet, it, it's amazing. It's amazing what gets popular on YouTube and it's amazing what gets ignored. Um, but just don't worry about that. Make something that's important to you uh, and get that out there. Because there might be a huge hunger for what, what you have. When you're making your video, what's one thing you should definitely do? Um, I think you should definitely have a a target audience in mind and what I've done is as I've I've focused on a target individual which for me is myself five years before I cared about science um, just focus on that person and communicate to that person so that your the level of uh, conversation can be consistent uh, and one thing to avoid one thing to avoid when making videos uh, don't be a dick don't belittle the people who don't yet understand your subject or who might be on the opposite side of your philosophical viewpoints. Just reach out to them. Be nice. And, and finally, one video, definitely go and watch. What would it be? Oh. Planet Earth. David Attenborough is the man. He knows what he's doing. Look up to that man. He will guide you well. So long, people of the internet. I hope to see you on my channel at statedclearly.com and my other channel at statedcasually.com. That is very important. Let's be very clear about that. Stated clearly, stated casually. Links are here. Go and check them out. All right, awesome. What a lovely piece of transatlantic wisdom. And if you like that, there's links to John's channels here on the screen, as well as to an interview that we did with the delightful Ines Dawson from Jaw Curiosity. And if you just stumbled upon this video and you don't know what you're looking at, but you like what you see, then click subscribe and watch more. Uh, I've been Ali for Galab Lab. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.